What's up, everybody? Welcome back to a brand new episode of Street Geek. I'm your host, Darius Morgan, and we got more Predator news. So let's get into that. Let's do it. All right, so starting off, we got Jacob Tremblay, who will be the son of Boyd Holbrook's ex-Marine character. His son is autistic, and he's able to read different languages. And he play, and this ability plays a key role in the film itself, so obviously he'll be able to read Yatwe language. I'm okay with this to a degree, only because Yatwe language isn't something that can just... I don't know, I just... There's a disconnect in their language for me because it's not it's very simple yet it's not it's 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 intricate and simple at the same time so i don't i don't know um also because of the canon in the films you don't know that they've never gotten their hands on any form of technology to know how, what their language even looks like maybe you know arnold schwarzenegger's character dutch could have drawn up what the what he saw on the on the countdown wrist but i'm not sure if they're gonna go back that far you know well predators went back that far so maybe they will too and so did predator 2 but the scene was cut but you can only see it where they actually do interview anna and talk to anna but it's only you only see it in harrigan's um you you only see it in uh (laughs) in <laughs> Gary Busey's car so it, 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 his his van his uh stakeout van but but yeah it's 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 I, I'm fine with it I just hope that it's believable and the execution is there and it it, it all works out that's because I'm not I'm, I have to see it to believe it when it comes to humans and predator films I I don't care <laughs> I just don't I mean I really just don't. I just don't care. But, with that said, I care about this. I hope he does well. I hope that we see a believable son and a believable father and a believable relationship and drama in there. Because one thing that you always need in horror films is drama. Because that's what makes a great horror action film. Because where the because with drama comes believability and with that believability comes credibility and the film becomes better for it next batch of news comes from multiple sources and i didn't know if this was legit or not but i'm going to entertain the this rumor until it's official and talk about how apparently there're going to be more than there's going to be more than one yatwe in the film so with that i'm okay with it I, I, I like that idea, but I want to see something different. Because in every Predator film, except for AVP, they have been seen as the villains. They've been seen as the monsters, and they're not monsters. I think at this point in time, they need to be treated as people with dynamic traits. Because the Yatwe have a civilization, they have a culture... They are advanced. They are sentient. They are like us in many ways. So to just ignore all of that, I don't. I, I just think it just doesn't sit right with me, especially at this point in time. It you should be able to evolve the way you tell a story about a predator visiting Earth. So, for example, if there is a group of predators, and and this is their clan, then these Yatwe need to have character dynamics. They need to look different individually, and I don't mean muddy greens and muddy browns. I mean bright, vibrant colors, similar to the Lost Predator. I keep going back to that one because that is one of the best-looking Predator designs to me because his color pops. It really shows. His color really shows. His design really shows. He's very vibrant and also dangerous. (laughs) But that's what I want to see. I want to see characters... I don't want to see monsters. I want to see characters. I want to see them treat it like characters and treat it like they're living. They have life in them the same way the humans do. There needs to be drama between them just like there needs to be drama drama between the humans. Another thing is, okay, if there is a group, then why is this group here? You know, 
You can't just have a a, a, a bunch of a bunch of Yatwe show up and then not have the reason, which we're gonna get the reason. But if it's a very, if it's a very, I don't know, hollow reason, like oh well, there was war here and they showed up or they showed up to hunt, like no, scrap that because that's been done before. And you twisted it on its head with the with predators, but that's been done before. You need to show the layers to the to their people and to who they are so what i mean by that is mix it up you know similar to what i said in the previous video if there if you have a character like olivia munn who is a scientist then go a step further and be like all right well maybe they captured one of their own and now this clan has gone on a mission to save one of their own that way you have the drama going on now from the perspective of the Yatwe, they are going to fight the monsters. And from the perspective of the humans, the monsters are coming to them. So now you have two power dynamics going on. You have the people on one side who think they're against the bad guys, and then you have the Yatwe on the other side who think they're against the bad guys. And this is how you could play it out. And Boyd Holbrook has this group, and you have this one clan leader, this one Yatwe who's maybe in some cases similar to Boyd Holbrook's character. Who is maybe retired or whatever and, 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 and an ex something and gets back in because of whatever. And have it like that because it's I, I really think they shouldn't be afraid to show more with these, with these, with, with the Yatwe because it's been done before but it's just that it's been done in poorly executed films. It's been done a lot in AVP. In the AVP franchise, you saw more layers to them than you did in... Predator, Predators, and Predator 3. Maybe Predator had a, a, a lot of la layers when it came to showing that the Yatwe is not invincible. He can feel pain. He can be afraid and whatnot. But in this situation, you, it, it, you need to really show how they interact with each other. Because you did it in Predator 2. But it was very, it was very last minute, and it was very, it was, it was the end of the film, so you couldn't see it all the way. They did it again in Requiem to a degree, but Wolf was acting against dead bodies, <laughs> so there wasn't much for him to go off of. And then you do it again in Predator Three, but not, I mean, but not really because. The Berserker didn't really talk to any one of his clanmates. They didn't communicate with each other at all. They, I don't, I don't, to be honest, I don't really know if they even looked each other in the eyes at any point throughout that whole film. So that's the kind of interaction I want to see. They are a people, they are a clan, they are brothers in arms, so they need to act like it. Because we can no longer keep seeing them as the monster because they're not monsters. They're not villains. They are amoral. When they hunt, it's the same as we do. To a deer, we are whatever, and, to, and, and imagine that we're the deer to them, in a way. But at the same time, they are not here to murder human beings and, you know, do it all willy-nilly. They have an honor code. They don't attack you if you're unarmed. They don't attack you if you're pregnant. They don't attack you if you're sick. They don't attack you, period, unless you pose a significant threat. And with that said, it's like, okay, we know that, but let's step outside of that now. Let's say now they're doing this because of a loved one or something like that. That's when you can really get into the character of who they are and really make a, a special film. If it's a group of them, even if it's one of them, have that same thing, you know? There's one against many now. So you need to have that same kind of that same kind of dynamic, and and that's my whole thing. That's what I want to see from this film. I don't want, I don't, I want them to take it seriously, but also try to have fun with it and take the mythology seriously and try to expand it the same way Predator Two expanded it, the same way because as, as, say what you want about any of the film, any of the films after the first film, because I love all of them after the first film except for Predators, but everything else after the first film I really enjoyed, and. I, I just think that at this time, at this point in time, it's it's time to take their mythology a step forward. Look at the stuff that you read on the back of the NECA 
material and take from that material, take from the comic books the way they operate and the way they talk to each other, and even take some of their hairstyles because some of them sometimes wear their hairs, wear their dreads in a in a ponytail. So that'd be cool to see. Um, <laughs> but 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 yeah, do that, man. That's 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 what I want to see. That's what I say to that's what I would say to Shane Black. But you know, Shane Black had a hand in crafting the first film, so. This, that's the only, one of the only reasons why I am on board with this because we have one of the original writers back and you know that's always good to have vet, veteran veteran ta- talent on a previously established property but with that being said I'm going to bring this video to a close let me know down below what you guys think about this news if you like Jacob Tremblay's casting and the idea of his character if you like that there's going to be more than one yacht way and yeah so with that said, I'm going to bring this video to a close. Let me know down in the comment section below what you think of Jacob Tremblay being cast in the film and his role in the film. And let me also know what you think about this possibility of multiple Yatwe being in the film and how you think that they're going to approach that situation. Once again, my name is Darius Morgan, bringing you Shriek Geek, presented to you by Speak Geek Unlimited. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And you guys have a good afternoon. Peace.